It's a Conor McGregor fight. So we're gonna see what uh, what happens tonight. I'm hoping he wins. Hey, Nihon. She's tough. What's the matter, y'all? Hey, who are you going to karate kick in the face tonight? Are you gonna no karate kick? No, nobody's going to get a karate kick in the face? Come on, the UFC's on. you got a karate kick. Swear to God, kick me now. Train the muscles, not the joints. Back to another Natural Galant bodybuilding vlog. And today I'm gonna to be training everything except for triceps. I'm not gonna be training any triceps today, but I did do some extra sets for biceps. So like I've talked about before, sometimes I'll do some extra sets for some body parts just because I wanna work on them or, or work on some sort of hypertrophy type sets. You know, just getting a couple more sets in there to get a different type of adaptive response in the muscle because you have to find ways to increase your intensity. And a lot of times people think it's just weight. That's the only way to increase intensity, but sometimes volume, volume is necessary. It's a different type of stimulus and it does work. So sometimes if I'm doing, uh, you say five sets of something and I find I've stagnated and I cannot get any stronger or nothing's really happening. It seems like I'm just kind of hitting a wall. What I will do is up the volume with the same weight and just repeatedly do more sets. And sometimes that will help me just blast through that plateau. Okay, so it, it causes a different type of adaptation in the body, but it all really leads to the same place. Okay, so if you're upping your sets, upping your intensity through weight, or upping your ability to go through the burn, you know, either way, you're gonna cause some sort of adaptation in the body. And this lends the question, you know, and this is something I wanna talk about a little bit, and I was gonna do another video on it, but I might as well just talk about it today there are two types of failure okay so positive failure so i always talk about go to failure in your sets or pretty close to it meaning do as many reps as you possibly can with a certain weight until you cannot do any more and that means your body will have to be forced to adapt right it will adapt to that weight because it's saying oh geez you know i'm not strong enough i'm trying to get more reps here but i'm dying here i'm hitting absolute fatigue now it's important for you to understand that there is two types of failure one is where you feel like your muscle is on fire and it hurts so bad that you can't do another rep because you're in so much pain. So that's like an endurance type burn. It's like a lactic acid type burn in the muscle, okay? But then the other failure is the one that a lot of people are familiar with where they just can't lift the weight. I mean, they can't even think about lifting the weight. They try and try and try and the weight just keeps on coming down on top of them. Say they're bench pressing, they just can't push that weight up, okay? That's positive failure from a strength point and that really works the nervous system. The nervous system is really responsible for that type Type of failure you know the failure where you just can't push anymore it's not as much of a burn but it's just absolute failure now both of these types of failure is necessary for you to include in your training program okay in order for you to grow now I'm not saying you have to let weight collapse on you I'm not, I'm not saying that what I'm saying is you need to challenge both of these types of failure in your training program so say you're just barely getting five reps on the bench or just barely getting 15 reps on the bench it doesn't matter what the reason is whether it's nervous system failure or the muscle burn failure in your muscle okay those are both good types of failure to hit you want to hit them as much as possible and that will lead you to higher amounts of hypertrophy now one thing that some people say to me, they say, Jason, I notice you stick to 15 reps, you stick to 20 reps, you know, you're, you're you know, staying in the higher rep ranges most of the time. Why is that? Well, the reason why is because if I go in the five rep range or the four rep range and I hit close to failure in those ranges, it is more dangerous. That's just a fact. It is a little bit more dangerous for injury and you want to make sure that all cylinders are firing properly before you hit those rep ranges, okay? Because if you have something that's a little bit off, uh, you know, if there's a tweak or an injury or a muscle knot or whatever uh, sometimes you can snap something so you want to make sure that you feel right before you hit that type of heavyweight type failure you know what i'm saying you don't be lifting 500 pounds and you feel like everything's kind of sore or tight or just not moving right you know and that's where i think people kind of get mixed up they think just more weight and that means more muscle it's like no it's how you use the weight you know how many reps are you getting if i can do 80 pound dumbbells for a set of 50 reps and and i i keep on going you know and i and 50 reps as much as i can do and somebody else can only do 10 
guess what? There is more muscle needed for that because failure is still being hit within a minute or two minutes, right? So if you're hitting failure within a minute to two minutes, you're still hitting the creatine uh, phosphate phase. You're not really getting into glycogen or aerobic activity yet. You know what I'm saying? You know, especially around the one minute range, I find the one minute set is pretty much perfect. You know, anything under a minute is definitely going to be building muscle and strength. There's no doubt about it. So I find a lot of people that they're, they're so busy trying to micromanage, you know, how many reps exactly, what percentage this, what percentage that. It just, it's actually, honestly, it's kind of annoying. It's, it's really much simpler than that. It's more about safe effort. That's really what it's about. How much effort do you put out? And whether you're doing a high rep day or whether you're doing a low rep day, can you manifest the effort to do as much as you possibly can safely? And that will cause an automatic adaptation in the body. You don't need to overthink everything. You don't need to constantly working with percentages and this and that. I find that that's just, uh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know where this type of thinking started, but that never really applied to my training. I just basically would sometimes say, hey, today I want to see how much I can lift for five reps. You know, I, I want to challenge myself just to feel the heavy weight. That would be how I work the nervous system. So sometimes I'd pyramid up and wait. I'd do bench press with 225, 275, 295, 315, 365, you know, sometimes. And then I just do a rep or two and then I would burn it out with the high reps after. Just like I put up a video by that one guy that was asking that question. The fact is, is that that is a principle that I would apply. Sometimes I would do, you know, the powerlifting type of technique and then I would start repping out with the muscles after, right? There is no right or wrong way here. It's just a matter of, are you hitting positive failure? And there's two ways to hit failure. One is you go as deep into that burn as you can when you're doing the higher reps and you just keep on going. And the other one is you hit that nervous system failure where you just can barely push another rep and you have a spot there and, and maybe somebody helps you get that last rep up or just helps you, you know, edge out that last inch or whatever that you just can't get. That's how you do it. You know, so the other thing I want to address too is a lot of times uh, people are saying, hey, Jason, do a shoulder workout, do a shoulder workout. I don't know. Uh, I guess a lot of people are new to the channel, so they're not really watching a lot of the vlogs. But the fact is, is that you can see right now I did legs, I did some chest, and now I'm doing some rear delts. I include my entire body in a workout, so I don't really need to go into a specific workout. You know, I'm really basically just training and and i'm training all my body parts in one day almost all of them so i'm always training shoulders i'm always training chest i'm always training back so i don't really go into just one day of shoulders or one day of biceps that that very rarely happens because like i've said before i do enjoy a higher frequency in my training I'd rather lower the volume down and just do a higher frequency. I find if I spend an entire day on shoulders, it feels like my back, my chest, and my legs and everything have lost their pump, but my, yeah, my shoulders might be ballooned out, but it feels like something else is missing. So I find the overall body workouts seem to be better for me. Uh, but I know other people, they seem to really love just concentrating on one body part for a day and doing 20 or 30 sets on it, you know? So yeah, I'm not here to say that's wrong or anything because I can understand the allure of that too. I can understand the feeling because you get such wicked pumps doing workouts like that too. So I would recommend people from time to time doing those types of workouts as well because it really hyper saturates that area with blood. And when you hyper saturate an area of blood, it might help break through those barriers. So remember how I talked about when you increase your volume, that's a type of intensity. Well, that could be one way you do it. You know, one day you just do 20 sets for a body part and you just say, okay, that's it, man. I'm just going to pound the crap out of this area just so it breaks through this you know plateau it's at so yeah i i don't believe in any one principle i just believe in applying whatever is the necessary way to do it you know whatever way challenges you at the time is probably the right way you know when it comes down to bringing in more muscular development right so here you can see i'm doing the double pump thing i'm double pumping the shoulders and the reason why I'm doing this is because it helps me really get that extra squeeze and mind muscle connection on the rear delt when I'm in a contracted state. So I'm trying to take the momentum out of the movement a bit and just really, really focus on uh, some parts that I don't usually feel when I'm doing rear delts. So here I'm doing some seated rows now. The day before, I probably did some heavy bent over rows. So sometimes what I'll do is just an easy movement like this, just seated rows. And it doesn't look from this angle because of the lens that I'm even moving that much. But really what I'm doing is pulling the shoulders back a lot. My shoulders are actually moving forward and back quite a bit. Now I don't lean forward. Why don't I lean forward? Well, because what happens is my lower back starts to become more of a weak link in the exercise. And then I start to bring the shoulders forward and up. And I find that that takes the stress off the lat. Oh, 
Oh, sick. This guy's name is Pythons, but I, I don't know why we call him that. Come on, Pythons. Little boy. So it all boils down to the weak link principle, which I made a video on. So you click the card on the top right hand side of the screen and you'll actually go to that video if you want to take a look at that. The weak link principle. Whatever you make the weak link will depend on what adapts in the exercise, right? So here you can see the angle a little bit better, right? So you can see that I'm really pulling that back, you know, really pulling the shoulders back and I'm really actually keeping the chest out the whole time. So I've got this real little sweet spot there, which is really contracting the back and taking the arms out of it, taking even the rear delts out of it in a lot of ways. And also uh, not allowing my lower back to become, you know, fatigued also, because if I'm leaning forward and back, then my lower back starts to become more a part of the exercise. And I'm really just trying to hit those lats and hit the, the traps in between the shoulder blades. A lot of people ask me, how did you get traps, Jason? How did you get traps? You know, what's the secret? Well, the way I train back is the secret. That's how I got traps. And the way I train shoulders, that's how I got traps. I never do shrugs. You know, people are always surprised to say, oh, do you do shrugs? I'm like, no, I, I don't do shrugs. I find they're kind of a useless movement for me, although some people like them, but I find that if I do bent over rows and I really contract that lat and the traps in between my shoulder blades, I really get a good trap workout and it seems like I get the good old overall development from that. Like a real Italian there. A real Italian in our gym. With yeah, I gotta be careful around here. Yeah, sure. So from there, I went to do some bicep curls and I'm um, just working my way up in weight. So sometimes I'll do two or three sets with the 30s and I'll work my way up to the 40s and sometimes I'll do a set uh, with the 50s as well to finish off, you know? And of course your form will change as you do heavier weight. You know, I saw some people making fun of this one guy on the internet as his form changes. But the thing is, the heavier weight you get, the more it will actually uh, start to sway the body a little bit and tilt you forward. But the most important thing is just to make sure you keep that tension on the bicep. If the tension stays on the bicep, if there's a tiny bit of swing in there just because the momentum of the dumbbells come down or not it still doesn't keep you from working the bicep you know some people think oh a little bit of swing and then the biceps are totally taken out of the movement and that's not true the biceps are still contracting you see i just did a slow movement there slow movement and then come down slow it's not because i'm cheating it's more about finding the efficient way to keep those biceps pumping you know what i mean i'm trying to find the efficient way of moving to keep those biceps pumping who wants to get choked out who wants to get choked out with these fucking things huh wait for you like then this guy this guy right here this guy wants to get choked out. I can feel it. I can feel it right there. There he is. That's, yeah, that, that's right. That's the guy. That's the guy, eh? Hey? I'm going to tap you out. I'm going to tap you out, man. Well, Stefano's hilarious. Anyway, just so you know, him and I go back and forth like this all the time. We're always like, it's kind of like the Pink Panther and Kato. I don't know if you guys have, you know, most of you aren't even old enough to remember the Pink Panther, but he used to have this ninja that used to attack him from behind the doorways whenever he come home and stuff, just to keep his skills, you know, alert and, and keep his martial arts skills in check. <laughs> so it's pretty funny. So yeah, Stefano, he's always giving me a kick to the back of the head or whatever it is. So I got to get him back once in a while. <laughs> so here you can see I'm doing a different movement here. And this is based on uh, some of the weak links I have based on some of my injury history. Okay, so I'm trying to basically just hit a different part of my bicep and to really establish that mind muscle connection with the weaker part. And because of the tear in the area from that chiropractic injury I told you about, uh, when my bicep is extended under certain ranges of motion, uh, it has a real weak torque curve at the end, you know? So uh, it's only my left bicep, but the fact is, is that by doing movements like this, it seems to uh, help just strengthen up the area and I'm seeming to get some pretty good bicep development now anyway, dis despite it. So you always want to work on your weak links, you know, so wherever you're weak, you want to make sure that you're trying to find ways to strengthen that area. And that's the great part about bodybuilding. You can always strengthen up a weak area and it might not be as strong as it was before, but it can still get strong and help balance out how all the muscles are interacting in that area, right? Now today was a day that I wanted to do some extra bicep work as you can see, right? Usually I only do one exercise, do three or four sets and that's it, right? When I'm, especially when I'm doing the whole body workouts. But today I wanted to do some constant tension type exercises with a cable as well. And the neat part about cables is that they keep the same tension all the way through the motion. Whereas when you're doing a dumbbell, you know, most of the force is just straight up and down. So once the dumbbell starts moving in an arc, you know, there are certain parts of the motion that have less stress than others and it, it just changes how the bicep fires okay so sometimes with the cables i find that you can get a more 
or at least a better contraction in, under certain ranges of motion. You know, it's not better all over, but it's better for the squeeze and better for the top range of the motion. And I find that I can get a really good pump from this. So I'm just experimenting because really what you want to do is you want to hit all the angles, you want to hit all the fibers, and you want to hit stretching exercises as well as contracting exercises. And that's how the body will adapt and grow muscle, right? So free weights are great. I think free weights are the best, but once you start integrating some machines with the free weights, that's when you really notice some big results. Well, thanks a lot for watching. And if you need to get a hold of me, just go to naturalandbodybuilding.com and take care for now. Yeah, Conor McGregor, man, he kicked some butt tonight. And I just love watching that guy. He's great. <laughs>